What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and the chances are, if you're a Chelsea fan, you are doing well. Student has indeed beaten Master. Chelsea have beaten Tottenham away in their stadium, being coached by former Chelsea coach Jose Mourinho. Chelsea being coached by Chelsea legend Frank Lampard. The narrative oozes all over the gaff. Chelsea lost 4 and 5. Tottenham won 4 and 5. They were heavy favourites. A Willian, Mason Mount masterclass. And to be honest, it was a Frank Lampard masterclass as well. We're going to get into all of that today. But before we do, a reminder to you there, the viewer, to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do click the bell notification icon like this video. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna talk about the game, player performances, and where this leaves Chelsea moving forwards. So let's bring up the analysis screen. Boom, boom. Next to me, you can see the stats and who scored ratings from this game from the who scored match center. As predicted, Jose Mourinho went with his favored Tottenham 4 2 3 one with that Sissoko dire double pivot, those four pretty good players in attack. But like I said, when I previewed this game on a news video, I think Frank Lampard should go for a back three in this game. I had a feeling he'd do it. The man did it. I said it when I was on Eunice's stream as well. He said it to me and I said, dude, maybe even like bring in Marcus Alonso. It all worked and not that Marcus Alonso was amazing, but the fact of the matter is it worked. Jorginho was dropped for the midfield two, I suppose, of Kovacic and Kante. Mason Mount was moved over to the left flank instead of Pulisic and Willian played on the right. People might have critiqued these wingers or players playing in these positions like you think, oh, the future of Chelsea, Hudson-Odoi and Pulisic, but Mason Mount and Willian were extraordinary in this game. The first half was complete Chelsea dominance. In fact, the first half an hour or certainly 25 minutes, Tottenham didn't even see any chances. I think they got a couple of half chances uh, before the break, but generally it was all Chelsea. After a corner, Willian scores an absolute Wonder goal, man. He curls it into the top corner. Aurier should have done better in terms of pressing him and closing him down, but Willian with an excellent finish. Eden Hazard would have been watching that in Spain, laughing his little Belgium buttocks off. And also, right at the end of the half, Chelsea get awarded a penalty, obviously, from Gazaniga going out and essentially assaulting Marcus Alonso. VAR correctly awards the penalty, but why it took so long, I will never know. No Jorginho on the pitch, so Willian steps up. The man of the moment tucks it away beautifully into the bottom corner. So Chelsea go into half time completely dominant. The stats are like, I'm not even going to pull the stats of a half time, but it's basically all Chelsea. They're, they completely outclassed Tottenham in that first half. And I think a lot of it had to do with Jose and Tottenham not maybe settling with Frank Lampard's superior tactics. <laughs> anyway, second half, it begins to get tasty. This always happens between Chelsea and Spurs, especially when Spurs are losing. Spurs can't lose to Chelsea. Like, there's so many games over the last sort of four or five years where they lose their heads, they start fouling. There was really poor fan behavior in this game from a portion of the Tottenham fan base in the crowd that were throwing stuff at Kepa and there's alleged racist chance towards Rudiger. I'm not here to hate on opposition fans. There's racism and problems throughout the league but hopefully that gets investigated and sorted out. And obviously there's no place for it in the game. Another huge talking point in this game was the sending off of Hugh Min Son. Now he basically gets into a tangle with Rudiger. He falls to the floor and he sort of puts his studs up into uh, Rudiger's stomach. Now, I mean, you know, I can see why he was, sent, he was sent off and it's violent conduct, but it is, it's not like the violence of yesteryear when you throw your studs in someone's, you know, stomach. He wasn't trying to hurt Rudiger. It was more like a sort of get off me mate sort of thing, like a little tap. But at the end of the day, Rudiger let the, you know, he let the referee and indeed the VAR officials know that he's been hit, even though you could see it. And it's petulant, it's violent conduct, you can see why it's given, but, you know, it, it's a soft, violent conduct dismissal. So, red card off. To be honest, it's not like Chelsea particularly turned on the gas mega when Spurs went down to 10 men, because you know there's a lot of psychological changes on both sides when a team loses a man. But Chelsea did control the game from there on. Frank Lampard obviously told players to 
be more sensible and mature rather than free-flowing attack. Kovacic was on a yellow, he got into a bit of handbags with Deli Alley off the ball, which is pretty funny. I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's just classic derby stuff. And he will actually be not he's suspended now for the next game. But it's Southampton at home, you know, Frank Lampard will probably survive playing a double pivot of Jorginho and Kante. Jorginho actually comes on to replace him to calm things down, get on the ball, pick passes, basically become a more sort of a lucid presence in the match. And Chelsea do get a bunch of chances so basically I wanted you guys to see the who scored match center and see the stats from the game but let's get rid of the analysis screen and talk about player performances right so this is a really difficult thing to do because the whole team was superb now even people like Alonso which at times I was like oh yeah you're Alonso aren't you when he was getting turned by all right we conceded fouls in silly places but he was good he was like Good enough. He was like Marcus Alonso wing back. I'm available for the ball. I know when to be forwards I know when to be back even if you can criticize Alonso for being slow and clumsy He was in the right places. He knows those tactics down to a T that served Chelsea very very well The midfield was superb Kovacic in that first 30 minutes was insane I think he got a bit irate with the Deli Alley stuff and his game lowered a little bit But he was immense playing out of the press early doors all the front three, or the attackers, Tammy Abraham didn't get his goal, but he was having Alderweireld on toast. He never stopped running, he put it all in, he had a couple of chances, maybe he could have done better with, but that doesn't matter because they weren't, Chelsea didn't need them, it wasn't a do or die. And generally his work ethic and general play was excellent. Mason Mount was absolutely imperious. Now I know he's probably a conventional number 10, but on that left wing drifting inside, He's been really good this season, and this game, he was immaculate, he was, you could tell he was honed in, he had a little bit of nastiness, he was like, I'm proper Chels from a young kid, I know what this game means, but he was very, very technically good, he combined well, and he always made the right runs. As Blaguerre, very, very good as well, um, got gassed out, made a couple of notable mistakes, but he was, he was a leader, he was a captain in this game, and that was very important. All three centre-backs, pretty good, dug in, a couple of silly mistakes, um, Tomori did a couple of misplaced passes early, but that was just nerves, he settled in and became excellent. And really, in, in the more, like, senior of the two, in Zuma and Rudiger, they were very, very good. A couple of mistakes each, probably tops, because, you know, it is a very high-octane game, like emotionally charged game, but they were good, man. Maybe Zuma made one or two mistakes I'd prefer he didn't in terms of jumping over people to win balls, but you need that aggression in a derby. But let's talk about it. <laughs> Chelsea's number 10. Just as all news outlets are publishing, oh, Chelsea have nailed on to get Sancho. It looks like they might get Sancho. Sancho could come to Chelsea. Chelsea's number 10, Willian Masterclass. Not only did he score a superb goal, scored a superb penalty, there was moments throughout this game. He was defensively immaculate, running back, getting the ball, combining. There was that bit when he was like left back position and he flicked the ball round, he take, took it down and pressured, flicked it, turned it, made an amazing pass and advanced forward. Th like, it's like he's rolling back the years, you know, this is like prime 26 year old Willian now in his 30s. I, I, I don't know what it is Maybe it's the whole because he was gonna sign for Tottenham and he signed for Chelsea and there's the animosity and all the narrative and that But Willian credit. I mean, I've been a big fan of Willian generally especially in this Lampard team But I know why he has his critics and I often voice that but I often defend him as well but no one can criticize him in this game. He was magnificent it was a Willian masterclass. So Chelsea see out the game, Spurs get a bit aggy, they can see a bunch of fouls. Classic, uh, what happens in these derbies. And Frank Lampard will be very, very pleased in what was a really good result, a superb first half and a really mature performance in the second half to see out the result and ensure Chelsea got not only all three points, but a clean sheet as well, which have been rare this season for Chelsea Football Club. Before this game kicked off, a result going against Chelsea in this game could have seen them being knocked out of the top four by Tottenham and Tottenham replacing them in the top four, which would have been incredibly difficult for Chelsea. To be honest, this was a very, very daunting game, right? A score draw would have suited Chelsea fine. So away at Tottenham, they're in really good form. Score draw sees you stay in the top four, for the Christmas period, you know, moving on to the new year, whatever, or to Boxing Day, and that would have been fine. To be honest, Chelsea probably could have lost 2-1 or something, and it wouldn't have been a crisis still, even though they've lost a bunch of games. But to have such a impressive, immaculate performance in many ways, like immaculate's the word, really, 
is just excellent. One huge positive thing about Frank Lampard, amongst a lot of stuff really, is his willingness to adapt. A lot of people saw that as a frailty or a weakness at some times, uh, but when he first went to that free back system away at Wolves, it was a masterclass. I was saying it, Eunice was saying it before this game, he should do it in this game, it will work. It was a masterclass. The only problem is, after last time Chelsea won against Wolves away, he stuck to that free back system when we played Valencia and lost to them at home and it was the complete wrong approach. So hopefully Frank Lampard doesn't go, wow, I'm going to play 3-5-2 or 3-4-3 three, three all the time now. Because it simply won't work. It was just basically the thing to do away at Tottenham against Jose Mourinho's 4-2-3-1 system. Remember, that's what Antonio Conte did when he saw the league. He's like, look, I play a free back system. Chelsea preferred he didn't. But as soon as he said, look, everyone in the Premier League plays 4 2 3 1, just let me play this. And you know, you know the rest. So, what does this mean for Chelsea? Chelsea are in the top four for Christmas. Lovely scenes. The feel good factor's back. A superb performance. You know, a really feel good win away at Tottenham. Bitter rivals against Jose Mourinho. Student beats master. It has to be said again absolutely superb scene but the transfer window opens soon what is this going to mean about all these wonderful performers in this game today did they raise their game because of certain links or how is frank lampard going to approach the transfer window now because the academy sprinkled with a few mature players feel good factor is back and does he want to upset that apple cut i mean i'd probably still really 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 like a left back in January. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game. Remember to follow me on social media at Football Yannick, both Instagram and Twitter. Also, subscribe to Yan Plays, my other YouTube channel. You'll like it. Link in the top of the description. Enjoy the football, guys. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby